Good evening, everyone, and welcome to our Speaking to Spirit series. Tonight, we are blessed to have one of the foremost patriots of one of our founding fathers. Uh, ben Franklin is going to be with us answering questions tonight. He is, his record during the revolution, uh, bringing the French to our side, and everything that he did for our country is outstanding. He is undoubtedly one of the most notable of our founding fathers. So we've talked to him a little bit before we turned the camera on. So without any delay, why don't we get started asking him some questions. Okay. Ben, are you a member of the Soul Family of God? Yes. I was sent back for the mission. It was a time that that it was a time that I was sent back so that I could help free the people in what was then the colonies from British rule. God wanted to found the United States on his principles and I did my best to influence those principles and incorporate them into the founding documents. I believe you were a big success there. Uh, you came from a large family. How did that affect you? My father had many, many children. My mother had seven children by him, and he had many from a previous marriage. So it was very crowded in our house and very competitive. So I was, I'm not bragging, but I was a little more intelligent than the rest of my brothers and sisters. So I left home at an early age. Okay, in your youth, what did you consider the most important freedom? I always considered especially in my youth, freedom of speech. is that, that is why I got into printing newspapers and almanacs and all the things that I did as, as, as I, when I was younger. What do you consider the most important freedom now? I still consider freedom of speech the most important freedom. Without that freedom, everything else dies. Why did you leave Boston in your youth? I thought there would be more opportunity in Philadelphia. I was promised that I would be able to start a newspaper in that town. Things didn't work out, but I did, I did find my prominence in that city. Why did you found the first library in Philadelphia? At that time, I was relatively young and didn't have a lot of money, and books were very, very expensive. So with friends of mine, we got together and we pooled our money so that we could purchase books and leave them at a central facility so that they were available to all of us. Did you ever own slaves? Yes. I, at one time I owned as many as seven slaves. But as I traveled, that was when I was younger. As I started to travel to Britain, I became more and more aware that slavery was absolutely wrong. And in the end, I freed my slaves, and they act and actually maintained friendships with them. Did you believe in God at that time? I always believed in God, as sometimes I was unsure as to just the dimensions of God, but I always knew that there was a supreme being that existed. Okay, so how would you describe God from your early beliefs? My early beliefs were based basically on biblical tradition. That he was that he was the God in charge of heaven and that if you lived a good life you would go to heaven and if you lived a bad life you would go to hell. Okay. How would you describe God now? Now that I'm on the other side, I understand the true powers that our God has. I am on being a member of the seventh realm, I get to I get to work with with him and understand that his powers extend throughout our galaxy. I have been on many planets in service of him, and I can tell you that his powers are unlimited. Why did you become a Freemason? At the time of my youth, most of the important people were Freemasons. I felt that it was an organization 
that would help me to promote some of my political activities. What role did the Freemasons play in forming our country? Freemasonry actually played a very, very important role. Many of the Founding Fathers were Freemasons, and that Brotherhood worked together to bring principles of freedom to the people of the colonies. Who were some of the other prominent Freemasons? George Washington was probably the most prominent of the Freemasons. Uh, Hamilton, Jefferson, they were all members of the group. Okay. What would you like to tell us about Poor Richard's Almanac? I started writing Poor Richard's Almanac using an assumed name. I enjoyed writing it very much because it gave me the opportunity to tell others many of my early beliefs. I used Poor Richard's to make sayings and tell other individuals of what was going on in the colonies. It actually proved to be a very good source of income for me. Why did you only arrange a common law marriage with Deborah Reed? I knew that I would be traveling much and I felt that it would be best if we just simply left it as a common law situation. My first wife had died. Oh wait, I don't think that's right. I felt that a common law situation would be more beneficial to my needs. Okay. Who was the mother of your son, William? Ah, you're trying to ask something that is a secret that I've kept through the years. If I told you her name now, no one would recognize her. But she was a lovely young girl and was actually my first love. Were you the originator of the phrase, fish and visitors stink after three days? Yes, I wrote that in Poor Richards, and I think it was actually one of my better sayings. <laughs> yeah, there's a lot of people still go with that. <laughs> How did you become interested in electricity? It was simply ob observing one of the miracles of nature. Whenever lightning would strike a tree or a house, the energy was, was phenomenal. So it was, to many at the, during our period, electricity was, was this great mystery. So I thought that I would do my best to try to understand it. Okay. Would you explain your kite experiment for us? I wanted to prove that static electricity came from the clouds. And I actually flew a kite into into the low hanging clouds and it did transform static electricity. I was very careful at the time not to allow myself to get wet so that I would conduct any if we had a true lightning strike and I, I stayed under a roof over an overhang and stayed dry but we were able to transfer static electricity from the storm. Okay. You're ex you experimented with electrotherapy what source did you use for your electric bath? We used a primitive form of batteries. We experimented and found out that there were ways to set up chemical reactions where static electricity would be produced. And we actually tried to induce that into water baths. Would you like to tell us about your love of chess? Chess is a wonderful game. It truly taxes the mind and it gives one a chance to work out their aggressiveness on a board. It is a very complicated game and I learned, I love to play it very much. When I went to England, I managed to find players of great ability that could test how good I was at the game. What do you consider your greatest accomplishment of the many? My greatest accomplishment is the role of getting France involved in the war. If Had they not become involved, there would have been no way that the Americans could have defeated the British. It took me quite a bit of diplomacy and work 
but bringing them into the war was the final blow for the British. Yeah. What was your opinion of the William Penn family? The William Penn family was very arrogant and attempted to rule their lands of Pennsylvania as a sole proprietorship. Many times they would make decisions that would override the democratic wish of the people that were living in the state. I thought they were quite boorish. Okay, tell us about your stay in England during the 1750s to the mid-1770s. During those years, my stay in Britain was actually quite enjoyable. I still had pretty good health, and I could travel around, and I got to be accepted as part of royalty over there. They allowed me to participate in their government, and I was allowed to speak for the people in the colonies. I tried to oppose the Stamp Act, and I eventually did what did manage to have it repealed. I tried my best to convince the British that Americans were different and would need a higher degree of independence. Unfortunately, I failed in, in totally convincing, convincing them of that. So how were your views accepted in London during that period? In the beginning, I think they, they, they started to... In the beginning, they believed that what I was speaking had some merit. But as the colonists began to be more and more aggressive in opposing the rule of the king, I found more and more resistance to what I was trying to say. Yeah. During that period then, did you think that the colonies should accommodate the wishes of Britain, or at least some of them? I thought that they should accommodate some of the wishes of Britain, but as, as time went on it became apparent that there was, we were going to have to fight for our independence. Yeah. Were you ever a British spy? No, I never acted as a British spy. There were times that I tried to smooth things out between the colonies and the people back home thought that I was actually favoring the British, but I never acted as a spy. Okay. What was your role in drafting the Declaration of Independence? At the time the Declaration was being drafted, I was actually suffering from a, from a case of, of gout. I did make some minor changes and I did help Thomas make, with some of his wording, I, I, I tried to kind of sit back and guide as best I could. Thomas was, was an extremely brilliant individual, and really his concepts needed very little help. Okay. Tell us about your role as Postmaster General. When I was living in Philadelphia, I started trying to set up a postal service, so it was always kind of in my in my realm of understanding. So when the colonies decided they needed a mail service, it was only natural that I was picked to be their postmaster general. Okay. In 1776, you went to Paris for nine years. Tell us your role there during the revolution. It was my role to try to get the French involved to offset the great power of the British Empire. Only the French had enough had enough ships, and men, and equipment to help defeat the British. Had I not been able to get them involved, we would not have been able to win at, George, at Georgetown. So we thank you for that. Okay, uh, what was your role in the writing of the Constitution? Once again, I tried to, I tried to bring some of my ideas to fruition with them. The Constitution was more difficult than the Declaration because all of the, the colonies had to agree. So we did a lot of compromise and we finally came up with a document that I am proud to say lives today. Okay. Um, why did you become an abolitionist? I started to understand the true cruelty of slavery. The British were the first to, to really start to try to eliminate the slave trade. I realized as I grew older that all souls should be free. And that was one reason we put some of the wording that 
all men are created equal in the Constitution. Under that assumption, there was no way that I could continue to, to own slaves, so I, I freed them. What was your opinion of civic and personal virtue? I always thought that civic and personal virtue was very important. I must admit there were times that I did slip a bit on the personal virtue side, but I was forgiven for my, for my transgressions. But I always felt that civic virtue was one of the most important characteristics that an individual could display. You wrote a letter entitled, Advice to a Friend on Choosing a Mistress. What was your advice? I wrote that in one of my weaker moments. I, was t I tried to, I had a friend that was looking to, 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 to befriend ladies into becoming his mistress. I tried to comment on the virtue that the woman needed to show and that if it was truly to remain secret, she, he would have to choose a woman of good, of good repute. In those days, it was quite common for men to have mistresses, so it was not as big a deal as it is today. But I just, I, 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 I told my friend that he would have to show caution and clearly think out what he was doing because it could have great repercussions for his married life. Yeah. When you lived, what was your opinion of salvation? I believe the classical teachings in the Gospel that, you're, that if you lived a good life your soul would be saved and you would go to heaven. If you lead, led a bad life you would, your soul would not be saved and you would be sent to hell for eternity. What is your opinion now? Now I understand that there really is no hell. I mean, we do have a lower level over here where the bay, where evil people are sent so that they can contemplate what they've done and decide that they truly love God in their heart and want to live good lives from that point forward. Okay. What was your opinion about the divinity of God? I always thought that God was the divine power. I never fully understood the concept of universes and galaxies until I arrived back over here. Once I arrived, I truly understood that God is the ultimate energy in our galaxy and has unlimited powers and only wants all creatures in his galaxy to do well and follow his commands of love. Okay. You described yourself as a deist. Will you explain that? That was just simply that I believed in the ultimate power of God. Okay. Did you consider yourself a member of any particular religion? I actually participated in many religions. My, my father was a Quaker and I was at times Presbyterian. The, the, the Church of the British Empire, the Catholics. I actually studied all the many religions, but I would say that I was a free thinker and never really devoted myself to any one of them. Hmm. Have you reincarnated since your life as Ben Franklin? No, I've not come back since my life as Franklin. I suppose I will sometime in the future, but I have not, since that time I have not walked the earth. What is your opinion of our government today? There are many things that are happening in your government that makes me ill. Especially the attempt at elimination of free speech. The newspapers in my day were meant to give a, free, a, a, a true opinion of what was happening in government. Obviously, there was no such thing as television and radio when I walked the earth, but the newspapers, we, were, we gave them the freedom of speech so that they could act and hold our government in check. Today, I see that many of your so-called news medias and publications are actually arms of your political party and are not bringing the truth to the people. 
that makes me sick. That goes against everything that I ever stood for in my lifetime. I hope that in the future you will be able to adjust that and get back to the concept of, free, of a free press, a press that is not influenced, and, the free, and that all people have freedom of speech. I'm with you on that one. Have you seen Jesus? I had not seen Jesus until he came to me recently. Even though we are on the, on the upper level, there are times that we are separated from him. I had seen him in prior, in prior times, but it had been a while since he'd come to me to ask a favor. I know that there will be a time in the future that he'll want me to go back, and when he asks me to do that, I will certainly reincarnate as he asks, and where he asks me to go. So what do you think when you see your face on so much of our currency? In fact, I just saw it tonight on a $100 bill when I was going closing out my register. I'm quite flattered, actually, uh, although I think some of them do make me look a little on the heavy side. I wish that I could have uh, influenced the, the engravers when they did my image. It would have been nice to weigh 180 pounds again, but anyway, it is with great pride that you still think enough of me to have me on to have me on your currency. You're very deserving. So do you have a final message for us? I would just like to thank everybody that's taken time to listen to my words. It is very enjoyable to be able to talk to the people again. We never obviously had the opportunities that you and that you and Connie have today. You can, t you can have the ability to reach many, many people where when I would talk to groups of counted in the hundreds. Uh, my newspapers were widely read, but even at that we were lucky to reach people in the th that numbered in the thousands. You have a great chance. We, uh, I understand what your mission is and what you've been sent back for. Please Bring the words of God to as many people as you can. Speak of his love and speak of the freedoms that he influenced us to bring to your country. Without the, fa the, without the freedoms that we instilled in your government, your, the United States of America will flounder and cease to exist as is a, all of the other great countries. Be strong and support all of the principles that we as Founding Fathers brought to you. With that, I'm going to say good night and thank you for letting me speak to you. Thank you. Thank you so much, Ben. It's uh, it was definitely an honor to have you here. I appreciate you took the time and I thank you for your timely messages. So with that, I'm going to say good night. If you like what you see, please subscribe to our YouTube channel and we will be interviewing more very famous and historic figures in the future. Good night and God bless.